Welcome to the Get Your Writing Done podcast. I'm Trevor Thrall, author of the 12-Week Year for Writers. If you enjoy today's episode, please think about submitting a review wherever you get your podcasts. That really helps. And for weekly updates on the podcast and other writing resources, you can subscribe to my newsletter at getyourwritingdone.com. Are you one of those people who uses a fancy watch or phone to track your blood pressure, heart rate, daily step count, laps, swum, miles run, calories consumed, and all that? Uh, Or on the flip side, have you ever decided not to get on the scale after Thanksgiving or maybe uh, after a vacation? Or did you ever do so badly on an exam in college that you didn't bother going to pick it up from the professor? Measuring things is a double-edged sword. It can be fun to use technology to gain insights into every nook and cranny of our lives. But on the other hand, measurement often comes with judgment, blame, and shame. Scorekeeping can be a powerful tool for building and maintaining a productive writing routine. The trick is to create a healthy approach that combines objectivity with respect for your emotional landscape. We live in an era of the quantified self. You can read articles, books, magazines, uh, full of people experimenting with all kinds of crazy ways to measure their health, their performance, their activity, their mental health, you name it. People are trying to measure it more than ever before, I think, in history. And I'm excited about a lot of those things. I admit it as a tech lover. I have an Apple Watch, I have an iPhone, I like computers, so I'm I'm immersed in the digital world myself, and because it's so easy to measure things, I've tried over the years measuring all kinds of things. I'll admit, though, most of those things I measure for a while, and it's interesting to look at the numbers, uh, but eventually the numbers uh, get boring and don't really seem to have done anything for me, so I I stop. I stop looking. And, and frankly, the Apple Watch is mostly used to tell time uh, once again. Um, but, you know, the, the, the quantified self is a really interesting topic. It's an interesting movement. And, and it's got me thinking a lot about the different ways that writers keep track of their writing. Um, because I think, you know, writers, like everyone else, live in a digital world and have access now to all sorts of tools to keep track of what you're doing, help you do it, and, and so on. Uh, but I think sometimes what gets lost in the G whiz discussions is the why. The why are you measuring things? And and so that's what I want to talk about today is the importance of, of scorekeeping, of keeping track of your writing, um, but not just keeping track for keeping track's sake, but keeping track for the central purpose of helping you get your writing done. And so I'm going to talk a little bit first about about something sort of the opposite of the quantified self, which is why do so many people find themselves not tracking their writing efforts? And then I'll talk a little bit about why I think you should track your writing efforts. And then I'll end with some discussion about how I, I think you can go ahead and do that in a healthy way. And I, I emphasize the healthy part there because I think one of the things that puts a lot of us off keeping score is that for many of us, um, you know, we encounter a lot of scorekeeping, um, you know, uh, places in our life that, that don't feel particularly healthy. And so I think we need to acknowledge that uh, and find healthy ways to keep track of what it is we're writing. So, so why don't we keep score uh, when we're writing? Why don't we always measure how many words we're writing every day and keep track of whether we're sitting down t- to the to the writing desk on a regular basis. Um, and I think, you know, probably there are a million reasons uh, that people might give, but I, I made a list of some that I think are pretty common um, <laughs> that I myself may have experienced more than a few times in life, but that I know others have as well. And, you know, I think probably one of the most central reasons is that um, when we're not getting our writing done, uh, when we're not following through on goals that we have set, 
projects we have laid out in front of ourselves, uh, that feels bad. <laughs> and we don't like to feel bad. So to avoid feeling bad, of course, it's easier not to confront yourself with that information. And, and keeping score of your writing progress when you're not making progress would be a, a really good way to make it obvious. Uh, and that would make you feel bad, right? And so to avoid that kind of ego uh, hit, uh, we just avoid keeping score. And I, I think, you know, any of us who have ever been on a diet or an exercise plan, when it starts to peter out, um, you, you stop getting on the scale, you stop, you know, you know, it's going the wrong direction. And so you stop getting on the scale, you don't want to know the news, you know what the news is in the back of your head, but you don't want to confront yourself with it, because you don't want to do anything about it. So, you know, you're, you, you, you avoid. So I think, you know, not wanting to feel bad about yourself, not wanting to admit that you're failing on some goal that you might have set yourself, those things hurt. So I think that's sort of the most obvious reason that we stop keeping score, if we were keeping score in the first place, that is. And I think a, a related reason that we often don't keep score is that we feel judged by metrics. Uh, you know, school, you know, for all of us from a young age has drummed into our DNA practically the feeling that we can be summed up by an external force with a number or a letter. And, you know, when the number is good, yeah, sure, you feel good about yourself. Um, but the flip side of that coin, of course, is that when the number is low or the letter is the wrong one, you can feel very bad about yourself. And, you know, many of us just aren't good at certain topics. And so school was like a minefield where you're sort of, you know, getting blown up by these numbers on a regular basis because you can't seem to get the hang of Spanish or algebra, for God's sakes. And so, and the way others treat you uh, sometimes when you get low grades, um, you know, uh, they treat you poorly, frankly. A lot of teachers treat it like a moral failing to get a bad grade in school. Uh, so I think a lot of us are kind of, um, you know, habituated or, or socialized in a sense to, to fear metrics and to try to avoid them when we can, because they've given us such bad feelings in the past. And, and it's not just, it doesn't end with school. Of course, you know, we, we all have annual reviews at work or things like that. Uh, we have credit scores. We have all sorts of places in our life that seem to be run by metrics or algorithms and, and feeling judged, of course, is the last thing any of us want to do. And so um, not, not adding writing to that pile, I think, um, can be another reason that we don't want to keep track. And I think, you know, sort of related to that is we want, we don't, many people don't want in their, in sort of their private life. And, and if you're writing as part of your private life, you may want to keep that space, you know, friendly and safe and have writing be that safe space for you and escape from the rest of the world where you're feeling judged. And certainly, you know, in that place, you don't want to feel pushed or rushed like you're, you're behind in some universal sense, because you haven't hit some kind of goal um, on a piece of paper. And so that feeling of wanting not to be judged of wanting not to be rushed or pushed. I think those are other reasons as well why we, we wouldn't want to put goals and and word counts and stuff like that on a, on a piece of paper and, and look at them on a regular basis. But I think another reason that's, that's very prominent for a lot of people, especially given the busy world that we live in, is that many of us have so much going on, not just with our writing, but in all phases of life, um, we're just too drained um, physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, to keep track of yet another project. Um, I was reading for this, for this podcast, I was doing a little research and I came across a few different uh, blog posts and, and articles. And, and one of them was interesting. The woman talked about how she, um, she kind of liked keeping track in a very simple way of, you know, putting an X on the calendar. If, if she, you know, sat down to write that day, um, but eventually got bogged down and stopped when she realized it was one of six different projects that she was trying to keep track of whether she did them or not every day. <laughs> she just got overwhelmed. And I think, you know, that's, that's exactly what I mean is that, you know, we, we keep track of so much 
in our lives or need to keep track, need to stay busy with. And it, it, whether you're trying to keep score or not, um, you're busy with the kids, with school, with your job, with your church, with, you know, your hobbies, your fitness, you know, whatever it is, your health, your dog, your cat, your llama, that having one more thing that you need to focus on and stay accountable for might be one too many. Writing might be that one too many for you. And in that case, um, it just might be, it might be too big an ask. Uh, and then a final reason that I think is a nefarious one, um, you know, in a sense, um, is that, and I guess this is also related to the, to the, re, the last one, which is that I think there are phases, even for writers, where you don't really want to write, um, where, you know, again, either you're burned out or you're tired or you're maxed out. Your, your focus is, for whatever reason, on something else. And, you know, so maybe you're doing some writing a little bit or something like that. Um, but but you, you don't really want it to do it. <laughs> and so you're avoiding keeping score because uh, that helps you avoid sort of thinking about it, you know. And, and, and so I think during some of those fallow periods, it's hard, it's hard to want to keep score as well. So, you know, I think it's what's interesting to me when I think about all these reasons is that on the one hand, they're, they're all very understandable and in some cases even a good idea. Uh, you know, it's not worth uh, assaulting our own ego, assaulting our own personhood just to keep writing. Um, but, of course, um, on the other hand, you know, when we think about writing and, and most of us probably, you know, listening to this podcast and the one even doing the podcast is often in a position of, of, you know, being very excited about writing and wanting to find ways to write more consistently and more productively. And for when you're in that bucket, I think it's really important to keep score. These considerations notwithstanding, and we'll, we'll come back to all of these things later, um, because they're super important to keep in your mind uh, when you do create a system for keeping track of your writing and scoring. We have to keep these things in mind. But, but if we do want to write consistently and productively, I think it's going to turn out that we, we really need to keep track of our writing. And I think there are, there are sort of three really good reasons why you need to do that. And so the first one, of course, is... Um, not of course, but the first one is that, uh, and, and, you know, the business guru, Peter Drucker, I, I usually throw this line out there, you know, if, you, if you're not measuring it, you can't improve it. And so, you know, for me, I, you know, I want to write better. I want to write a little bit more consistently. And so in order to do that, I need to figure out what is holding me back from doing that. I need to kind of keep track of things. Um, so, if you want to be able to improve a thing, you need to measure it and kind of be able to, to diagnose uh, problems so that you can improve the process. And so that's the big first reason why we want to keep score or keep track uh, of our writing is that we need to see where the, where the hitches are so we can smooth them out and, and make life better. And, and, you know, I'll talk more about what I mean specifically by improving things so we can do better in, in a minute. But, but um, so improving what you're doing. And, and there are a lot of, for me anyway, I know, there are, a lot of, there are a lot of things over time that have cropped up as problems. Everything from, you know, my schedule being crazy to uh, getting distracted by things to not having a good writing space to actually working on the wrong kinds of stuff that I wasn't very interested in now and again and realize. So the, 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 the things that can crop up as problems are, are many and varied. And so, uh, you know, keeping track of what you're doing um, turns out to, I think, pay off big uh, because um, each of those things can put a real dent in your productivity over time. So, so the first thing is, I think, you know, figuring out what's going on and then in turn being able to fix it. That's the first reason you need to keep score of things. Uh, the second is uh, to keep yourself honest. Um, I think, um, you know, as important as it is to treat yourself kindly, 
um, you know, as I was just talking about, you know, we, we, we have all of us a sort of a, a rich history of being graded by others and being upset when others grade us harshly. Um, understandable, and it's important to keep yourself healthy and, and you know, safe. At the same time, uh, let's face it, we have to be responsible for our own work. We are, at the end of the day, the writer in charge. And so that means that any, you know, you know, failure to complete a project that you really want to complete is on you. And in order to find out why you're not getting finished what you want to finish, why you're not getting as much written as you want to write, uh, requires being honest with yourself. And so there's no way around it. Uh, you need to know what you're doing and what you're not doing, or else you're, you're never going to figure those things out, right? If you're not honest, if you don't look at the problem straight on and say, okay, that's mine. I own that. I need to overcome that now. How do I do it? If you can't have that conversation with yourself, you're never going to get there. So, and the first part of, you know, having that conversation is having the data, having the information about what's going on. And that's where the scorekeeping comes in is that's the data that helps you stay honest. Oh, I wrote a ton last week. Well, the data says otherwise. Well, but I write all the time. Well, the data says you missed you know, 60% of your writing sessions last month. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe I didn't do as good a job as I thought, right? Um, that's, that's huge. Now, uh, side, side note here, I, on, on keeping honest in the importance of data, you know, you, you've undoubtedly, you know, read, heard, had many discussions about, you know, the inequalities of um, men and women in terms of how much work they do around the house, right? Even in families where both couples work, women tend to do more. And I was reading an article um, recently, it was in, the, I think, the Washington Post about, about how um, uh, this, this couple was, was sort of reading about this, and the guy protested his wife's assertion that she did more, even though they were both working full time. And so they kept a time diary for a week. And they each wrote down all the stuff they did for the family. And at the end of the week, they took a look and, you know, she did way more than he did. And he just had no idea. He looked at it and he was like, oh my God, I, you're so, you're right. I'm wrong. I, you know, you can't deny it once you see it on paper. And so that data was a really important part of the discussion for them, for their marriage and for their relationship. Um, you know, and, and it started with being honest about who's doing what. And, and it can be hard because we, you know, the easiest person to fool is yourself. That's a, a Richard Feynman quote. He's a Nobel Prize winning physicist. And I love that, right? The first job is not to fool yourself. But the problem is you're the easiest person to fool. Because we want to believe good things about ourselves. So it's very easy for us to glide over the tough parts and to avoid thinking carefully about the fact that we didn't show up as much as we wanted to to our writing sessions and, and so on. So, so keeping track of the data is critical for being honest with yourself and having those honest, sometimes hard conversations about what's going on. All right. So problem identification and process improvement closely related to the second reason, which is keeping yourself honest. And then the third reason, and this is, I think, the happiest reason of all, is stress relief. Uh, I think it, this is counterintuitive for people who don't like scorekeeping and who think of it as anathema. Um, but I think once you are in the rhythm of doing it, um, then you can feel very happy when you start to hit your targets for the day or for the week or for the month or for a 12-week plan, if that's what you're working on. And I think the, the great thing is that when you're happy with the plan you've created, and you're happy with the, the pace you've set yourself, then when you find every day that you're managing to stay on that pace, you can relax because your writing is in good hands. It's in your hands. Your good hands are, you know, keeping your writing on track the way you were hoping. And every day that you, you know, and we've all had the experience, right? You mow the yard, you feel great. You wash the dishes. You're like, yes, that's done. You know, you pick up for the holidays and you're like, man, that just look, which feels so nice to have the house clean. You know, I have terrible cleanliness, I, but even I feel good when I, you know, clean my room or whatever. And, and so the same is true with, with, a, with a writing habit. When you see yourself building it and starting to follow through, your stress about all of this will go down, right? When, when you own the numbers, 
uh, when you make the numbers friendly to yourself and, you know, make sure that they're aligned with what you want, when you start following through, your, your stress is going to just drop immensely. I, I've been working with a, a coaching client recently, and she's been hitting her, her targets. She's been revising chapters of a novel, and she's been hitting her targets every week. In fact, she's been hitting them uh, uh, pretty early in, in the week, and she's kind of on a roll. And I can just tell when we talk every week that she's just in a fantastic mood. And it's, it's not because she's necessarily doing anything different in her writing, but what she's done is she's set herself the goals and she's kept track. And when she's hitting her numbers every week, she feels a great sense of accomplishment and she feels relaxed about it. Instead of worrying about, is it going to get done? She's, she knows it's going to get done. So it's, it's feeling really good for her right now. And that's a, that's a great thing to watch. Okay. So, um, you know, I think the sort of the, the, the big takeaway or the, the summary reason to keep score, you know, identifying problems and improving the process, keeping yourself honest, relieving stress. And, you know, in, at the end of the day, when you're doing those things, you're, you're going to get the fourth reason to do it, which is that you are going to be able to write more consistently and thus more productively if you're keeping track of how you're doing. And it's not because of the magic. You just set a number at, at a higher number and that makes you more productive. That's not how that works. The magic is in helping you stay on track. It's not, it's not about how fast it makes you go. You're either a fast writer or you're a sort of a slow writer. But at any rate, whatever your natural given setting is, you're going to be more consistent and thus over time more productive if you can stick to your system, stick to your process make your writing an automatic habit. And scorekeeping is one of the key ways to make sure you stay on track. That's, that's why it's part of the weekly execution routine in the 12 week year for writers. So, so you're going to, you're going to get all those things if you can build a healthy scoring system. So let's pivot to that and talk about what a healthy scoring system looks like. And, um, how, you know, how should we do it? And I think there are really sort of three, three main steps to this. Um, and the first is that you need to uh, first identify what the key kind of indicators for you need to be. What should you measure? Uh, because measuring the wrong things is not going to help you very much. Um, measuring the right things uh, is really going to help. So, um, you know, there are a couple kinds of things that people um, can track. And then there's something that I don't want you to track um, as a part of your scoring. Um, so the, the, the way to think of the, the indicators that you wanna track is that they are mostly on the, the effort side of the equation. Um, and, and, and also then on sort of like the, the finishing side, right? But, but I'm gonna distinguish the effort and, and the finishing from what I think of as the outcomes. So let, let me just explain. So, so we have lead indicators, things that are uh, the, the, the things that you're, you're actually doing, right? So you're writing, you're sitting down to write, you're doing research or interviews or whatever it is you're doing to get your work, your written work done. Right? How many ideas did you generate? How many hours did you work? How many writing sessions did you have? How many days of the week did you write? How many words did you write? Or if you care about such things, how many words per minute or words per day did you manage to write? Uh, how many posts you know, did you write? How many chapters did you write? How many manuscripts did you complete, right? These are sort of the, the things building from the a, a sort of atomic level of words and sessions and building up to to things that are probably your 12 week goals, like completed chapters or the number of completed blog posts or newsletters, or maybe even the submissions to a, a, an editor or a journal or, or whatever it might be that you're, that you're doing. Those are kind of common indicators that might go into your, into your thinking about what to keep track of. But, but those, I think you need to distinguish from outcomes. And I think sometimes people accidentally want to put outcomes in their scorekeeping. Things like the number of 
you know, manuscripts you have accepted for publication by someone else or uh, how many good reviews you have on Goodreads or Amazon or something like that or how many people buy your book or how many people read your ebook or whatever it might be, right? So actions that other people are going to take after you're done should not be part of the scorekeeping that I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is measuring your own efforts and your ability to hit the goals that you have set yourself. So my goal is to write this or to write that. Now your, your eventual goal, of course, might be to have people do all those wonderful things, but you don't have any control over those directly. So, so those are not things to put in your own plan because that'll just drive you nuts to try to keep score of something that it's actually someone else's job to do. So, so the first thing that you wanna do is figure out which of these sorts of metrics are the right ones for you to track. And I, I, there's, there are a couple rules here. The, the first is keep it simple. Um, the quantified self is an interesting sort of a, a game because there are so many things we can track given the tools we have. Um, you know, we have Pomodoro timers to keep track of every writing session. We have apps that will track how much time you spend in each program on your computer, which you could use to figure out, uh, or even each file to figure out how long you've been, you know, working on things of various sorts. We have word counters of, you know, baked into all sorts of programs and separate apps and so on. You can count how many sessions you had. Uh, you, you know, you can do all those sorts of things. But how do you know which one of those makes sense? Um, because with the quantified self, just like, you know, in the quantified writer, there's a couple things that need to stay in balance. And one of the biggest, most obvious ones is you're trying to measure things in order to become more effective and more efficient. But the danger is when you try to measure too much, you just get overwhelmed and you have end up with a Rube Goldberg situation where you're, you're, your measuring system is so complicated and so time consuming that it actually wrecks the, uh, the efficiency you're trying to gain or it's just so cumbersome that you just don't bother with it after a while. So we're trying to keep this useful and easy to use so that you can make it a habit, right? Um, you know, scoring yourself needs to be a habit just like anything else does. So it has to be quick and efficient, number one. So we're trying to keep it simple. That's the first rule. And the second rule is it has to be focused on things that are the most likely to give you useful information about what's going on. And so th that, what does that mean? Well, I think it varies by writer what the right things to track might be. So, and, and there I think, again, it's time to be sort of honest about, you know, your, your own issues. Um, what are the things that tend to be hardest for you to do? Uh, the things that you tend to be the most inconsistent about. Uh, I have a habit I like to do with people when we're starting to talk about 12-week planning, um, and I do this with my students at, at, at university as well, which is before you launch in this big project, you do a little pre-mortem. Uh, if this project doesn't work out, if you fail to hit your goals, if you fail to reach, you know, get all these things done in the 12 week plan that you're writing right now, why is that going to be? And let's think through those for a minute. And we can all do that very easily, I think, right? I think everyone, you know, by the time you're an adult, you know what your failure modes tend to be. Uh, because we've all failed a number of times at so many things. And the reasons are usually related. I tend to be, be too busy. I put too much on my plate. I, you know, get bored easily. I get distracted. Whatever it might be in your case, right? You, you probably know what these things are. And those things are going to show up in certain metrics, right? Is it going to show up uh, if, if you're the kind of person who tends to get distracted while you're sitting at the computer because you can't stay off social media, then I'm going to guess that would show up in your word count at each session. So that might be what to track. On the other hand, if your schedule tends to be nutty and you uh, start to feel the urgent pull of other things and skip your writing sessions, well, counting the writing sessions you're hitting is probably the most important thing to track, right? So what exactly the right things to track are, are going to be different for each writer. But the point is that we're trying to build as, as good a detector of your most common likely problems as we can without overwhelming you with too much to track. So, you know, I, I, writing's a pretty straightforward game. So there, I don't think too many things that you need to probably imagine 
um, I think for most of us, these things are pretty straightforward. So, uh, you know, for a lot of us, counting words is useful because we have, um, you know, if we're writing a novel or something in a particular genre, you know, you, you do need to sort of make sure it hits a certain size uh, to be um, the kind of thing that people are looking for. Uh, and so you, you might want to, you know, keep track of words. Um, the second thing is that, um, you know, I think the other uh, key issue for a lot of people is um, sort of finishing things is different from process things. So finished chapters, finished posts or newsletters or whatnot might be a very good diagnostic for people because, um, you know, either those are goals in your plans or they are really important intermediate steps towards your goals. So, you know, obviously finishing chapters or finishing parts of chapters um, is good. And, and the reason I, I bring up the finishing thing is that, again, thinking about different writers and different struggles we have, some of us can write and write and write and write. But when it comes down to finishing something, to admitting it's ready to be done, to taking that final pass through and being willing to give it up, right? For a lot of people, that's the hurdle that's the highest. So putting in a metric of, you know, chapters finished um, or whatever, manuscripts finished, posts finished, whatever the thing is you're writing, that might be the more important diagnostic. And, that, and again, that's why I, I, I want to, you know, make that general principle really clear that the right diagnostics, the right things to track are the things that are going to be, going to be the most useful to you in keeping you on track. So if you're a person who has trouble keeping up a consistent pace, in other words, not producing enough writing every week that, as you'd like to, then you might want to track how many times you sit down and how many words you produce. If, on the other hand, writing words is never the problem, but finishing things is the problem, then you want to focus on getting, you know, how many things you're finishing in a given period of time. Um, again, there could be other things that um, might be important um, indicators for you, uh, depending on what your different, um, you know, struggles or challenges might be. But, but in general, right, we're trying to track our effort level to make sure it's staying consistent and tracking our, you know, sort of finishing rate. Um, and those are the two basic things that we're, we're trying to track. So picking those indicators um, early on, figuring out the right way for you to measure them uh, is going to get you a long way towards having a useful sort of problem detection and score tracking system. And again, like I said, I think the other, the great thing about this is that especially when you're tracking things that can be troublesome to you, when you see yourself hitting those, you're going to get a great lowering of stress and a boost of confidence because, um, you know, the, yes, the numbers are there to sort of keep you honest, uh, but at the same time, they're for you <laughs> to track your success as well. So that, that's what they're going to be. So they're going to be a record of your success um, and of your commitment to, to doing this. So uh, that's going to be really useful. Okay. Um, the second thing uh, we need to do then is to um, track that data religiously. So once you've set up which metrics you're going to um, you're going to track, you you absolutely need to make a habit of tracking those things. And you know, obviously, the easiest way to do that is in the moment. So you know, if you have a daily you know something every day that's scheduled to be done for your writing project. Um, Probably it's easiest just to make a note every day of what you did so that it's easy. You don't lose it. You don't forget it. And so on. I tend to forget, you know, right away uh, if I don't, if I don't write something down. Um, so it's lost forever. Uh, if I work for 37 minutes on something today, if I don't write that down, I, I won't remember tomorrow. Um, so tracking right away is I think the easiest, but if you're a person who's pretty, you know, um, um, you know, like clockwork and, and you always sort of do tend to do the same amount and the same things in the same place. And, um, you know, doing it weekly might be at your weekly review might be enough, um, for you to kind of keep track. But, um, I think, you know, the, the more timely information you have, the better. So if you crater midweek on something, you know, why, why do you want to wait four days to address the issue? I think part of, part of the challenge of using the, the information is using it when you need it, when it crops up, not too late 
you know, to, you want to be able to figure this stuff out and get back on track relatively quickly rather than let it drop for a few months, ignore it and go, Oh yeah, you know, I'm not writing enough. So, um, addressing these things in the moment is, is key. Uh, and then, you know, the third thing, uh, to do is to use the data. Um, and you know, it, here's, here's the thing, like this is the jujitsu that we're trying to do here, which is, yes, we have a lot of psychological reasons why it's hard to track progress. We're, we're worried about failing even ourselves. Um, and we carry the baggage of, you know, failures past or judgments past whenever we see numbers, um, and we're worried about our own performance. But the flip side of that is at some point you need to own your own work and you need to own your own success. And so this data is not, you have to remind yourself, this data is not someone else judging you. It's not even you judging you. It's just information. It's just information. It doesn't say, oh, you only wrote 500 words last week. What a terrible person you are. Nope. All it's saying is you wrote 500 words last week. That's all it's saying. And if this week you would like to write 1,000 or 2,000 instead of 500, it's now giving you some information about what's going on. Oh, I wrote 500 because I only went, I only had one writing session last week. I had put down that I was going to do three. I only did one. And it, as a result, I did 500. Well, the information you've just gotten is one session is probably going to get your 500. So if you want to do more, you can fix it by adding writing sessions, right? That's what we're going for. We're not, we're taking the judgment out of this. We're, it's just about diagnosis of what's going on so that you can make a plan to do something different in the future if you want to, right? But you can't do that if you don't track the data in the first place every week and you don't sit down every week to look at that data. What's it telling you? Am I on track? Am I hitting my goals? Is the effort I plan to do re re resulting in the outputs I thought it was, right? Because there's all sorts of, and you can read in the book, there's all sorts of things that your data can tell you. Um, and you'll get good at figuring this out. Once you start to, and I, I will give this to the quantified self movement, right? Um, when you know your body, when you know your brain, when you know your tendencies, um, when you know how fast you run a mile, for example, um, you can tell really quickly if something's wrong, right? If, if you run, uh, I used to run back when my legs would allow me and, and I had a very, very, um, a steady pace. It was always, it wasn't fast, but it was always the same. And so if there was a day where I was running a lot faster or a lot slower, I, I could tell you something was different. And, and that's because I had kept track of how fast I ran closely for many years. And so the same thing can be true with your writing. When you really know yourself, uh, the result is you can diagnose problems very quickly and make solutions quickly as well. And then the last thing, um, I just want to say about, um, how to keep score, right? And, and again, in the book, I sort of walk through all these steps um, that I've just gone through. But I think one other thing that I really want to emphasize is that no matter what kind of scoring system you come up with, the other thing we need to do is have our mindset right. Uh, because none of this is going to work if you can't adopt a healthy approach to scoring. Because again, scoring, I, I understand, is absolutely a tricky thing to do for so many reasons. Um, but I think, you know, so I think there's two parts and, and, and this is echoing stuff I've been saying all through the podcast, but there's two parts to the mindset game. And, and I'm going to draw on the, the writer's mindset from the book here. Right? And if we think about the first three principles uh, from the 12 week year, accountability, commitment and greatness in the moment or, or grit, right? You, you're certainly going to need to draw on all, all three of those things to to embrace a scoring approach to your writing. Um, you know, to score is to hold yourself accountable. To be able to keep pace with a plan and, and to hit your numbers that you're looking for takes commitment. It also takes greatness in the moment because some days you're not going to feel like sitting for a whole hour. Some days you're not going to sit for two hours and you're not going to want to write more. Um, but if you have important goals, if they mean a lot to you, you need to recognize that it's on you. So taking ownership is going to, is going to mean embracing those first three goals. Uh, on the other side, right? The side where you're a human who has feelings that need to be considered. The other two principles are important, resilience and growth. Uh, there are weeks where you're not going to hit your goals. And uh, instead of feeling 
sad, sorry for yourself, like a failure, or like, you know, no one loves you. Um, you you got to draw on your resilience here. We all have those weeks, months, years, periods, right? We get sick, we get unhappy, we have problems in our family, whatever it might be, things throw us off track. And you, you, you can't beat yourself up for that. You need to get back up and say, that's all right, I can do better next week. I can do more next week. I can get back on track, right? We're all resilient people. And all you need to do is dust yourself off and say, look, I'm not going to let the craziness deter me from doing this thing that I really love doing, which is writing. So resilience is something you're also going to need to bring to the table. And then the last piece is the growth mindset. You know, I think that I, <laughs> I've learned by trial and error all the things that I ever learned really about writing um, productively. I've done them wrong for years until I figured out by hook and by crook, uh, usually by, you know, failing at something uh, that I needed to do things different. Um, but because I wanted to be better, I was open to the critique. And so when you're getting scores that you don't like, when you realize that the best you can do now is this pace, but you were sort of hoping for a different pace, you know, you have to respect where you are, but you don't have to respect it so much that you have to imagine you can't ever change. Right? This is a growth opportunity for us all. The reason we keep track of the numbers is to see how things are and figure out how to make things better. And so, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are or where you are in your writing career. I think we can always learn things that can help us do something easier or better or more happily. Right? All those things are important. Right? And I don't just mean writing more, but like writing more happily. That can be a huge, a huge goal, a huge thing that you can learn from keeping track of things. Figure out when you work most happily and work then. Figure out what days are good to avoid writing. Avoid those, right? Those are all things you can learn in part from a scorekeeping system. And so becoming a better writer, I think, is, is something that you can really use scorekeeping for. Okay, so we sort of covered a gamut today. We talked about sort of a bunch of the reasons why sometimes we don't keep track of our writing, why it can be scary and difficult to do that. Uh, then I talked about the reasons why I think it's really important that we do it anyway, because it helps us become better and more consistent writers, keeps us honest. Um, and eventually we'll bring about, I think a lot of stress relief for most people. And then I sort of laid out briefly the three sort of big things we need to do about keeping score, finding some key indicators that are simple and tracking the right stuff, uh, tracking those things religiously, using the data that we develop. And as we do so, to embrace the writer's mindset in order to get our head straight about what we're doing. That's a lot for one episode, so I'll, I'll leave it there. I'd be really interested to hear um, how you guys are faring with keeping track of your writing, what the strategies that you find most successful are. Um, and until we speak again, happy writing.